السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام و رحمت الله سعیدی does quantum entanglement apply to the holy sunnah of prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم for example the ring contains atoms from the reality of سیدنا امام علی علیہ السلام and same to the other sunnah I think we describe that the, their understanding of quantum entanglement, quantum computing is that two particles become mixed. So whatever this particle, separate particles, they become entangled. So if you squeeze this, this feels it, you squeeze this, this feels it, their understanding of entanglement is locked. That's completely the madad, that when you make the madad you're asking for the world of light to come together. So you meditate and contemplate that you're following Allah's orders from the eternal reality, وَكُنُوا مَا أَصَادِقِينَ That everything Allah ask in Qur'an now understand it in the world of light because Allah doesn't care for the earth, it's 50, 70, 80 years we're living here. Allah described have a taqwa, have consciousness and keep their company. That's why in the salah what we say is, Salaamu Alaika Ayyuhan Nabi Wasallam wa ibadallahi saliheen. How many ibadallah are in front of you when you're praying? We don't know unless you see. So when you're praying where are you that Allah has you saying these words? You're not praying here, you went on a miraj. As soon as you say, Allahu Akbar, your soul went. <clears throat> but Allah giving us an understanding that wherever you went you must be in the presence of Prophet because you're saying salams in first place in, in what is it called? In first place present, in present tense. You're not saying it in the past tense, wa ibadullahi saliheen. And how many ibadullah are in front of you in that salah? What did the companions swear by? Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq when he would make his du'a, I swear by the one whom holds me in his palm, holds my soul in his palm. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So what Firasal Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq had, that he knew when he's praying where his soul is. means this levels of marifa and that our soul when it goes into the madad and ask for the light to come, the light of the shaykh to come and the light of the shaykh is the light of his shaykh and shaykh and shaykh all the way to the light of Prophet because as much as they made durood, as much as they left and the Muhammadan light entered within their reality. Now we're becoming entangled in the realities of Muhammadun Rasulullah And that becomes Hadith al-Qudsi in which my servant did their obligatory prayers but now they approached me through voluntary worshipness. I became the hearing in which they hear, not the ears, the hearing. I became the seeing, is Hadith al-Qudsi, the seeing in which they see, the breath in which they breathe, the hands in which they touch, 
the feet in which they move, so much they become Rabbaniyoon and they say, Kun fayakun. This is Divine entanglement, right? How did you reach that? Allah says, not through the fart. He said, they did the fart <laughs> but I didn't grant it because of that but they approached me through voluntary. That way you can't say, I did voluntary and I no longer do the fart, that's corrupt. He says, they do their fart but they do voluntary because voluntary is love. When you're commanded to pray, your reward is not in the praying, that just saved you from fire. Your reward is if you pray the sunnah out of love. Your reward is when you bring food and, and water for love, when you gather for love because you're not mandatory to gather. So these acts of love Allah is granting us quantum entanglement. I'll give you eternal hearing, eternal seeing, eternal breathing. What's the nafas of Allah When people want to limit the realities of awliya, Allah is hadith of Qudsi, I'll be your hearing. Now tell me what is the limit of that hearing? Can you hear the scratch of an ant 10,000 miles away? Can they hear into the paradises that are beyond space and time? Can they hear Prophet talking to them? Is there a limit to Allah's hearing? No because then you, you, you fall out of Islam if you <laughs> limit Allah Then Allah said, I'll be your seeing. So they say, Itaqullah, have… Uh, what, how does the expression? Itaqwa firas al mu'mineen, fear the vision of the believer because they look with the gaze of Allah Be fearful of their, of their vision. Why? Because the hadith is describing, Allah is saying, I'm going to be your seeing. Now how powerful is Allah seeing? There's no limit. If he's a beginner, their seeing is maybe limited. If he's much more advanced, his seeing can be all the way into the paradises. And from the back of time when Sayyidina Adam was created, all the way to the end of time. Which one is more difficult, dunya or akhirah? Akhirah to reach your vision and firasat into the heavens is much more difficult and much more advanced than to close your eyes and go back and sit with Sayyidina Adam salam or sit all the way in the Akhir zaman and, and everything has already been blown up and burned. All the events have already taken place. Then I become the breathing in which they breathe. What's the breath of Allah It's qutra. So what type of power Allah can give to the breath of a believer? How much can he breathe in? How much can he breathe out? What can he breathe in? What can he breathe out? He can breathe in your soul and all your lights can be brought into their breath, cleaned and exhaled back. There's nothing. Why? Because this is a world of light. When Allah is talking about the breath it's not their physical form. In their spiritual reality, if their spiritual reality just merely <laughs> inhales, you know that's how the jinn eat. They're subtle beings, when they want to eat, eat they inhale and the energy comes towards them. What do you think then of the soul? In the presence of souls, the soul merely inhales and brings all the lights into its reality, dresses it, blesses it and then exhales it back out. So you would see it as only a diffusion of lights moving. So means holy hadith describing the realities and attributes of Allah dressed upon the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's a grant that can go out to creation. Because Prophet give to them from spiritual vision, spiritual hear, hearing, spiritual breath, touch. What's the touch of Allah I become the, the touch in which they touch. Inna ladheena yubayyunaka yubayyun Allah. So what's then the hand of Allah upon a, on Prophet and upon awliya? What type of tabarak their hand has? 
And what type of glory Allah give to the hands? So the Muhammadan nation is not empty and it's not powerless. So these are all the blessings of ishq and muhabbat that they draw near to the presence of Prophet and Allah bestow all this glory upon their realities inshaAllah. That's all quantum, quantum entanglement. Just Hadith al-Qudsi alone is astonishing for how to be entangled with Allah's vision. What, what can that be? And that's why these Wahhabis and, and no mind people when they talk they limit Allah they limit the many, many things and that's why the adab is just horrific. It's not a state of, of disagreement and knowledge, they limit Allah because the hadith al-Qudsi is describing, I become your seeing. So then what is that? When Allah say, I become your seeing, who could even imagine how to limit Allah's seeing? So when somebody says they can see into the heavens, this is nothing from Allah seeing, this is not, not a, a powerful th- event. If they look into your soul, they can see your heartbeat, they can see the, the vessels of your blood moving. A MRI can see that, a CT scanner can see that, ultrasound can see that, a dolphin uses that. How Allah gave the animals these powers? You know the dolphin makes a sonar in the water, it sends the energy, based on that vibration it sees. And Allah says, you're my chosen creation. What type of sonar your eyes have, your energies have, but nobody using them, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, thank you for this immense teaching about upgrading our software and hardware. The software may get a virus and stop the upgrade. How to clean the virus to enable more updates? The virus is shaitan. <clears throat> Why is shaitan in our game? Allah created the game for what? <clears throat> We're not supposed to be angels stuck at a station. We're supposed to come with free choice and begin to choose. So the first man planted, they had a lot of blessings and food came to them. Everything appeared because they have power of kun fayakun. Shaitan entered into the arena to what? To make him to sin. As soon as he sins the kun fayakun stops. So now he had to walk ten feet now to find his sustenance. Again shaitan would make him sin again, now he has to walk hundred feet to find his sustenance. And the whole battle is based on that, the whole game on this earth is based on that. Shaitan is to throttle the energy and bring down the energy of the believers until he can take them to disbelief like a soccer game. He has a mission and he's on a, he's on a mission and been paid to do that mission. So there's no way to, to convince him not to. As a part of his mission is to bring down the believer. Our mission is to fight shaitan by doing everything that Allah wants, do the good, keep the company of Sayyidina Muhammad and all of the spiritual practices. That puts a energy against shaitan and begins to push away and fight shaitan. Because me and you we are not equipped to fight, fight shaitan. So the only way to fight shaitan is to make your durood that Prophet fight shaitan. So people who don't do durood you see them all their life is messed up because they think really they can fight shaitan, shaitan playing with them so bad that even in their Islam shaitan is with them doing their Islam. And that's why you see them in the parks yelling, screaming, hurting, doing all sorts of violent things and what they believe to be their faith. But shaitan is playing with them inside their faith and laughing, thinking, ha ha you, you think you're Muslim and then go out and do harmful horrific acts in the name of Islam. Their only safety is the duru, the sharif and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad immediately stops that, stops the bad actions, goes after the shaitans and begins to correct the servant 
and life of testing and, and recognizing and uh, difficulties. So that to correct the servant. So this has an immense, immense reality and that's why the power of the sunnah, the power of… The sunnah is the complete love of Prophet How to eat, drink, walk, talk, everything how to according to Sayyidina Muhammad So this is an immense act of love inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Taala. Sayyidi, what is the reality of current UFO and alien related disclosures in governments worldwide? We'll go back to the talks that we had earlier. We said that they were going to acknowledge themselves. For Dajjal is a jinn, so his people will come out and they want to acknowledge themselves. So there's a point right now that they hide. And as a result of hiding they keep themselves protected. When they decide that they're going to reveal themselves that they, they can be killed because they will stay in a manifest form once they reveal themselves. As a result of making themselves known then Allah has ways that they can be destroyed and they know that the awliya understand how to destroy them. So they're fearful of that event and they're waiting for the Dajjal's protection to allow them to disclose themselves. So this is all a part of their game plan and the Dajjal's jinn reality is hidden. He's going to appear as someone very kind, loving, pious and this is his deception and deceit. Because we don't say anti-Christ because that's nothing to do with Christ, we say deception. So you can imagine if, if Hollywood knows how to deceive you with makeup and looks, this is the king of them is coming. He's not going to have a horn, he's not going to have one eye popping out at you but he's going to be based on complete deception. What Prophet described of the eye bulging is his reality and then we gave him talks on that, that he, his eye is bulging, that he lacks any nur from heaven and that all he wants people is the world of dunya, the light of dunya. And that's why all of his murids they put up a sign that signifies the light of dunya and that he promises them to have wonderful dunya lives. But he has no take in the hereafter and no, no part of the hereafter. So this is why he's not uh, two eyes but he's one eyed, he represents only hayat al-dunya not hayat al-akhirah. But he will veil himself to say, no I represent the heavens. Come with me to the reality of La ilaha illallah and as the people begin to come then he'll say, oh as a matter of fact I'm a prophet now, I'm the prophet of Hashem. And then after they follow him now into prophecy they left Islam, they broke all of the covenants of the religion. Then he says, by the way, because now he's got them, by the way I am the God on earth. Stuff. <laughs> and that time is it's, it's finished for those people, they can't change. So that's why Islam comes as pure and strong and says we have nothing to do with the human that calls himself God and the, the religion doesn't compromise, doesn't change, doesn't modify to whatever these people are trying to modify. And they have an agenda and they have a, a purpose for why they're doing what they do. The jinn that come through these people are hermaphrodites, both male and female. And they have an agenda upon disorienting and what is it called? Gender confusion. Why? Because the jinn are hermaphrodites. So when they occupy the people this is what they want to bring difficulty upon people and so that they have no God-given energies and protections. As a result of no energy and protection they can be fully possessed and that's what they want, the jinn want to possess the people and occupy them. So everything is in a plan and direction towards that reality and we've described that on, on many different talks inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum dear Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. 
Why does one feel so emotional whenever the Shaykh reads the bayah? <coughs> so the people whom have emotion and soft hearts, they, they feel the presence and the reality of their soul. So anytime the soul gets involved in the actions and the crying and the nazar of Prophet nazar of awliyaullah, then the, its reaction is crying because the soul has remorse. We didn't complete what we wanted to complete or what we were asked from Allah to complete. The soul knows that. So there's always a crying and remorse and sadness because the soul comes and, and puts onto the heart that we had promised a lot and we're coming short. So this is a, a, a gift from Allah to feel that love to feel the nearness, to feel like the bond of somebody that you've been waiting to, to be with for years and all of a sudden you have an emotional reunion. So it comes with the information into, the, into our being that this is a love that we have things that we promised Allah and that to try to accomplish it and have a himmah to accomplish them inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Sayyidi, I was in deep depression almost five years back and that was the moment when my brother introduced you to me. Allah knows how much me and my family is blessed with your sahbah. Thank you. Allah bless you. Thank you. Allah bless you. Pray for us inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, how do we build more discipline and gain the himma? The salawats and the actions, we said to make our faith real. So from everything Allah give to us, give. For every time that Allah gives to you, put your time. Means there's the expression that if you don't use it, you lose it. So we make an expression on our shirts now, use it or lose it, <laughs> right? So if we go from physicality all the way to spirituality, Allah put us in a condition that if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. If you don't use your arms, what happens? Muscles fall apart, you lose them. If you don't, lose, if you don't use your feet, your muscles fall apart, you lose them. You have all sorts of medical difficulties. If you don't take care of the health, you lose it. Then now go towards your heart. If you don't nourish love, you lose the capacity to understand love. If you don't nourish your, your emotions and use your emotions in your spirituality, you lose the capacity to understand emotions. So everything and if you don't use your faith, you lose your faith. It's not something that always just stays with you. Prophet described faith like a shirt, it gets worn out. So it means that if you don't completely or always use your faith, that's why we said faith in action. Go out and feed people, go out and do things. From what Allah gave, you give. Allah gave you time, you go out and spend the time. Allah gave you some food, go out and give some food. All of this use builds for us our own faith. When you feed people, you may feel good feeding them but you fed your own soul. It rejuvenated an energy upon your soul because Allah's rida and satisfaction. So our life is about doing things. If we just sit there and say, oh, I'm going to have faith for another 20 years. No, you're not going to have any faith because it starts to diminish if we don't energize it and completely re-nourish it. So and it has to be selfless acts. So we pray, we fast, all of those things but people email, I've been praying and fasting and now I don't feel like fasting this year. So again, you don't use it, you lose it. So faith, faith, the actions of faith are important. Go out and feed people, do charity, do good deeds. You know, go give, you're going to get a hamburger, go buy two for homeless people. Do things that will nourish the soul and bring that energy back onto the soul. And then we can take care of our own deeds and, and, the, and the good actions. You have to have a, a love and sympathy in the heart. You have to meditate and contemplate to bring energy, then you'll have energy. If you don't do anything, say, I don't feel any energy because you're not doing anything to bring the energy. 
And it's a whole package, we have to go out and do the charities, do good deeds, good actions, share. We say even now charity, you can share the articles, share the, the, the pages. That's all charity, bringing somebody towards guidance. So we don't use it, we lose it. And that's why it's so important to be of service. And other people are astonished that, look how much these people are posting all over the world. You know, tens of thousands of posts because you have, you know, tens of thousands of students around the world that are just posting and posting and posting because this is a khidmat. Khidmat and service brings rahmat and this is what makes people's faith real. We say impending difficulties and sicknesses and everything are coming. So then give water and food out for a day that uh, you look around and there's no water and food for you. That you have to have something in your hisab. In the last week tens of thousands of Muslims have been taken off the earth. Just it's un astonishing uh, in, uh, what, what happened. Algeria or Libya, was it Algeria or Libya? Libya's Libya. floods, Moroccan's earthquakes, un unimaginable, unimaginable that most were sleeping, entire buildings and neighborhoods came down. You know, rains that began to, to rain on a po population that probably doesn't take into swimming very much, not knowing how to even swim and waters and floods coming and just washing everything away. So people take life for granted and safety for granted but uh, faith in action is that I have to every day revive my faith, do my practices, feed people, make wells, give out this, do this, do this. This is my life insurance and my property insurance, my health insurance is all based on my actions with Allah And in the end if Allah calls my number to die, at least I died in a good condition inshaAllah. That we did something, not oh one day we'll come I'll do something good. No but every day we try to do something to make it to be real and to make ourselves to be protected inshaAllah because the difficulty is right there. InshaAllah Subhanahu wa bika Rabbil Izzat Amin Ya Sifun Wa Salaamun Al Mursaleen Muhammadulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa Wa Siri Surat Al Fatiha Shabbat Ya Rasul Kareem Ameen Shabbat Ya Ti Khatma Khawjaka Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.